Hi everybody, welcome back. This is chapter 15 of Outed, the story of Mitch and Jared. Let's begin. Mitch. It felt like yesterday had been three days long. The hospital, training in the backyard, and Jared's laundry, then shopping. I sat on the old couch, made up with blankets and a pillow, staring at the window at the street lamp. Jared had driven away. My world felt different. My soul felt naked, exposed. When I stopped to think, the panic set in, like a cat trying to claw itself into a paper bag. Too much had happened this weekend. The tournament was only two days gone, but it felt like a month. I had planned on leaving the monster house, but not having my whole life ripped open in the process. I had done something wrong, so very wrong, but I couldn't figure out what. I was a teacher for the white and yellow belts, but when I thought about it, my neck tightened up and the headache started. What right did I have to teach them anything? Look at my face. Look at my arm. I got up and wandered to the kitchen. Karate was the answer, but I had failed. Bailey had won. Maybe he was right, and I had ripped apart the family. Once we had good times, before Bailey had discovered me practicing in front of the bathroom mirror about coming out. The first skateboard accident. Everything changed after that. I couldn't be who Bailey demanded me to be. Yep, I was at fault. I couldn't hack it as a hetero and fail the family. Maybe all this talk of love and acceptance was a myth. Guys like me don't deserve a happy ending. Maybe my glucose was making me think weird again. I picked up the new lime green backpack and took it to the kitchen. Goodwill didn't have black tonight. I checked. A little low. Not surprising with how little I ate, plus the insulin. I recorded the results, made myself a taco from the leftovers in the fridge, sat on the back stairs, and looked up at the stars and ate. The stars didn't judge. I didn't know what to do anymore. Too much had changed. I couldn't hide any longer. At least I was, sort of, a Parker. Maybe I could have my name legally changed. Be a Parker instead of a Lassiter, for real. I went back inside and changed from the gray sweats to my usual black clothes. That was the Mitch I knew. I pulled on my shoes over the bandages Jared had applied when we had gotten home and kept the back door unlocked. I rode the longboard to my bank. Three in the morning. Now the whole town would know I was crazy. One ATM stop later and I headed back to the Parkers. The night air was cool, but not cold. It smelled of the dryness of the desert and an occasional cigarette. The view was quiet at night, peaceful, perfect for a guy who didn't want to face anyone. I planned to go back to work today, and it terrified me. My skateboard rolled along the sidewalk, making odd bumps with the sidewalk lines. The street lamps made giant circles of light I skated into, then out, just like my life. I rode back to the Parker's house and still had no answers. Jared had gotten back, and he sat on the steps waiting for me. Hey, what are you doing up? I asked and sat to his left. Jared gave a long, slow sigh and finally said, making a fool of myself. How did you make a fool of yourself? Jared leaned forward, placing his elbows on his knees and stared at the ground. He spoke very softly. I got really angry at Bailey for what he did to you. 
so I went after him with a baseball bat. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. You're making this up. I got to the monster house, got to the back door, and the neighbors called the cops on me, Jared said. He gave me a small smile, but there was no humor in it. Another level of fear layered on what I already felt. So I took Jared's hand and held it. Did you see Bailey? No, I saw Lopez. The police have Bailey, and it will be a while before he gets out. Lopez told me about the charges and the bail, Jared said. It's pretty serious. You shouldn't have gone, I said, softly, and pulled his hand to my chest. I couldn't handle it if Bailey hurt you. He's not worth it. I know that, Jared said, sitting up and looking at me. But Bailey can't get away with what he did to you. We sat for a couple of minutes, staring at nothing. Then Jared broke the stillness. Why are you up? I couldn't sleep. Jared said, I'm still worried about you. I snorted. You and me both. I told Mom about the debt, showed her the latest statement, told her I wanted to go to college. And? She doesn't have any answers either, but we'll figure it out somehow. Jared leaned back against the door and stared up at the sky. Can I ask you a really weird question? You don't have to answer if you don't want to. Okay, I said. No promises. What's the difference between kissing a man and kissing a woman? I had to stare at him to see if he meant it. Seriously? You're the expert. I've never kissed a man, so humor me. Jared said. With Michaela, it was just show, I said. I mean, she knew her stuff, and it was fun acting in front of the other kids, but I never got excited. What about those three guys in your book? Wes, Raul, and I don't remember the other one. Edmund. They are my three boyfriends. What happened to them? Jared asked. Edmund broke it off because he was afraid his folks would find out. Wes was only curious, decided one make-out session was enough, and with Raul, I broke it off because I was afraid Bailey would hit him. Who kissed the best? Jared asked. You're terrible, I said. Talk, you've got some catching up to do. Edmund was timid, I said. Then again, so was I. Was? I'm ignoring you, I said. Wes was barely more than a peck on the cheek. The first time I ever French kissed was with Raoul. He loved my hair, loved braiding it. He even had me in pigtails once. Threatened to blackmail me because I looked so silly. So what's it like kissing a guy for you? Kissing Raoul, Jared said. I got excited. Just a second. Jared ran back into the house and came out with his yearbook and a flashlight. He sat next to me and thumbed through the pages. Edmund, Eddie, him? He pointed at one of the pictures. I played basketball with him in my, my junior year. He doesn't look like your type. What is this? Critique my old boyfriend's night? Wes doesn't seem like much of a boyfriend. Let's see. He flipped through a couple more pages. I think I met him once in a Spanish class. Maybe. He never hit it off with the girls either. Maybe he's asexual. Or he's shyer than you. Never mind. Nobody is that shy. Are we really having this conversation? I said. Raul. I think his last name started with an A. Maybe. Jared went back a few pages. Him? He's gay? Track team, I think. Good kisser. Never had any trouble getting dates? Probably by. Would you knock it off? I reached over and closed the book. Yes, I've only had two serious relationships. Well, high school serious. We never did anything but make out. With Raul, it was more than a little, but nothing beyond kissing. Not like you. How many girlfriends have you had? You're changing the subject. Jared said, leering at me. 
if Edmund and Raoul were high school kiss-only boyfriends and Michaela was just an aunt, then are you, foster brother, still a virgin? I am glad it was too dark to see the blood rush to my face. Jared had figured it out. Jared. I climbed out of bed before everybody else and stared at the three little piles of clothes on the floor. One for lights, one for darks, one for reds. The unstoppable Mitch struck again. What had I done to myself? And why did I feel so happy when I thought about it? I turned on the lamp and hung my head to look under the bed. Nothing remained except for the stack of books holding up a corner of the bed frame. No bags of clothes, no old shoes, no old dishes, Everything was clean, and Mitch had evicted the dust bunnies. I bet I could have paid off the car with the money I had spent on clothes, or enrolled at college with Josh, or traveled the world, well, the western states anyway. I could have even gone on a singles cruise, met all kinds of women. Instead, I used the clothes as a carpet and walked on top of them. That, or I drank it away. Did they have a close Aholics Anonymous? Did I have a drinking problem on top of everything else? No, I wasn't like Bailey. But according to Mitch, Bailey didn't need to drink to be in the mood. That was only the excuse. But did drinking yourself in debt count as a drinking problem? I walked to the bathroom and climbed into the shower. How much of my debt was due to clothes, and how much due to alcohol? I rarely drank at home, only at bars when I was hitting on someone. I would buy, th buy them drinks, and then buy drinks for me. We would have fun, until my dick said it was bored. Some days I felt so hollow. As the water turned cold, I hurriedly turned off the water and went back to my room to dress. Talking to Mom had helped, and to Mitch, but it had only made me realize how pathetic I had become. If Mitch had this kind of debt, what would he do? He once did. He spent a couple of years paying off his ugly truck and made sure he had no help from Donna and Bailey. I looked through the receipts Mitch had stacked on the table, found the most recent one, and went to the closet. I had dozens of clothes I'd never worn. Would it hurt to take a few back and have the charges reversed? Usually the stores allowed 30 days for returns. It might trim back on the debt a little. I found the shirts, tags still attached, and pulled them out. Mitch refused to drink. Now that I had seen Bailey in action, I understood why. Bailey was mean all the time. Would I turn into someone like that? Would people see me as an out-of-control drunk someday? I didn't want that. Is that how Mitch saw me now? The occasional alcoholic? Maybe not occasional. It was two or three or four times a week. Maybe I did have a problem. I put the clothes in a shopping bag with the receipt and walked over to look at the credit card bills. I found the latest and sat on my bed again. How much of my debt went to shopping, and how much did I drink away? I placed stars by the bar bills and smiley faces by the clothes, and a frowning face for a gas by the, for the car. That wasn't a fun thing. It was a have to. About 50-50. I didn't like that answer. I pulled up an older bill and did the same thing. And another. Some months I spent more on clothes. Others, it was more on the bars and entertaining the ladies. A couple of times, though, it was for a pizza. Me and Mitch took out to the Overlook and watched the stars. Pizza and stargazing and talking all night. A cheap, sober date that I remembered for months. All the other dates were drinking and dinner and sex and hangovers. What were they? Expensive, drunken one-shots that were fun but I never remembered the details or names. I could still remember that first night out at the Overlook with Mitch.
and seeing my first meteor shooting across the sky, the sense of wonder, the amazement, a cheap, sober date, long before Mitch had to watch everything he ate. I glanced at the picture of me and Mitch goofing around, the sandy-haired kid that used to be me. That kid wasn't broke, or depressed, or trapped. What happened to the kid that just loved hanging around his best friend and having a good time? The kid who smiled and laughed and even skateboarded. The kid who loved basketball. When was the last time the adult version of that kid smiled or laughed or shot the hoops? When wasn't I worried about mom or my eternal debt? What had happened to me? I searched through the treasures on the now neat and tidy closet floor and found my old skateboard. One of the trucks hung loose, and the bearings in one of the wheels clattered when I spun the wheel. If I rode now, I'd probably fall off and break my nose. I put it on the floor and stepped on it. My body remembered how to balance. Memories. Two kids zooming down the sidewalks, giant drinks in our hands, back when life was simpler. I was going to be late, and I opened this morning. I walked out of my room. Mom's door was closed, so I walked past the living room. Mitch finally slept, hands behind his head, his head turned so the shadows hid the bruises. He looked almost peaceful, his face relaxed, his hair falling around his head. What a difference a couple of days made. He wasn't peaceful the other night. Rain, lightning, baseball bats, or the other day in the dojo. Mitch had never cried before. He had never shown even one iota of pain. But he did that morning. That old ache in my chest came back. Was I falling in love? I looked at the time. Shit. Java dive. I had time, if I forgot breakfast and coffee, and drove just a little bit over the speed limit.